Oh, this is gonna be a great sister to sister. We're talking about adult children. We have an adult child of Amy's <laughs> right here. And the question is, when do you get them out of the house? And what if your daughter is living with two guys as roommates? Is she? What do you do? Is and she? No, not oh my, my daughter, but somebody's daughter is. And we've got to talk about it today. Yeah, stay tuned. Welcome to Sister to Sister. If you've never seen the show, welcome, but it's a little different today. And here's why. We are so excited. We have Amy Schaefer's daughter, Gloria, is with us today. Yay! She's gonna be one of the sisters, and that's when the audience claps. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Her grandma's here too, she's gonna clap. Hey listen, this is gonna be a really good show because we're gonna have a different opinion, a little bit mm -hmm. younger, maybe. It's okay. Um, here's the question, here's the question. Yeah. This that I alluded to in the open, this is a real question. People wanna know, someone wrote to us, at what point do you give your adult child the boot and say, go to your own house? Flow. Oh. You never put your children out. They leave when it's time to cleave. Mm. So you never put your children out. And you always let them know, you know, you can always come back home if they go out and they make a mistake. However, yeah, I will say, <laughs> if the child is disrespectful, Ooh. don't ever put them out. Knock them out. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody will have to carry them out. So never put your children out. <laughs> I like it. I, I knew you would say that. Well, Roxanne, what about you? Oh, uh, it depends on who you are and who the child is. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. my kids. I never kick them out. See, I'm like that too. Uh, they, they're better in many respects than I am. They, they challenge me. They give me a new perspective in life. They challenge my motives, my intents. God's put them as gifts in my life. Now, if your child is go deadbeat or not working or find ways to use the time you're together to make them productive. Right. Instead of just booting them out, give them resources they need to be able to be successful when you do decide to kick them out. Gloria, do you think that parents should give their children a boot? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, I do, but I think like there's certain scenarios where you should, like if your kid is wiling out and doing whatever they want and living under your roof, I think, yeah, maybe you should kick them out. But I mean, there's seasons where you're in school or you're trying to save money or trying to pay for things. Mm -hmm. And I think like, that's the people who care about you the most. But I like that. I do think the parents should set up boundaries because I know being a kid, you can like take advantage because you know your parents are gonna do whatever for you. Do you know anyone? Do you know anyone whose parents <laughs> said time to move? <laughs> Actually, like, yeah. I do, do you have friends whose like parents kind of just wanted them out. They're like, you're independent now, like go do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So but my parents, you know, they're yeah. great. No, no, <laughs> they're not, no. They're not we bad. moved Gloria's bedroom. God forbid. She's been gone for, yeah. you know, two years at school. So we moved Gabe into her bedroom to give him some more space. He's a junior. And it, she's like, what? <laughs> That's like a shrine. Like, you don't move my bedroom and my stuff. So she already felt like she was being moved out just by giving one kid a bigger bedroom. But did you ask her? Good. No. Yeah. Did I? She really, yeah. Did I need to ask her? Yeah, it was her room. Ooh. I mean, I oh, mean, to, for me to come home no. as a child. Ooh, I told her. I told her. That's good. What in the world? I mean, if, Who if she invited you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Preach it, preach it. I just, I mean, I'm just no, saying, I like this. putting myself in that position, putting yourself in that position. Yeah. Yeah. If you know this, this is your home. You, she has, she's not married yet. She's <laughs> in college. She's coming back home, and all of a sudden, I'm like in the garage now. You gave my room to yeah. my, Ooh, my, like my brothers. It. I mean, that's kind of like. I like ah! that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't have anything to do with that. I don't have anything. To do. You need a room, baby. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go on to the next 
question. Well, I'm going to go on because I want to know what Amy oh, has to say about this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, Amy, listen to this question. Someone wrote this to us. She mm -hmm. said, I want to move closer to my grandchildren, but my husband does not. He says our life and our church, everything's here, and it doesn't matter that our family are states away. Am I wrong for wanting to go? And she writes, sorry, I don't want to resent my husband for saying no. Mm. I'm coming from the perspective of my mom and dad, what they did for me. Um, I don't have grandchildren yet, but when I do, I want to see them a lot. I know that. <laughs> but um, my mom and dad, when we said, Mom, we're, we're moving to Pittsburgh, we're planning a church, God has called us there. They did not feel the call of God to go to Pittsburgh. Their life and everything was in Oklahoma. That's good, Amy. So n my mom and dad said, you go and you do the will of God and we're behind you 100%. So without manipulation, without, I mean, we always tear up when we're parting, but never ever have, has she manipulated me in a way where I felt like I couldn't be where God has called me to be. And God has always made up the difference where we could meet up with the grandchildren there, here, beach, wherever. Good, good. And you just really have to trust God. It doesn't always work out that you live by your grandchildren all the time. And there is a sacrifice in that. Well, let me ask your daughter how she feels about that. Now you're out of state. Yeah. Do you want your mom and dad to move by you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's laughs> no. <laughs> well, okay, the way I look at it is like, like she said. <laughs> That's really funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, for no, other no. reasons, of course. Yes. But, yes. like, I know mm -hmm. I'm where I'm supposed to be, and I'm listening to the call of God on my life, just mm -hmm. like my mom said her parents did with her. And I know my parents have this whole church and ministry in Pittsburgh, so why would I want them to be pulled away from what God's called them to do where they're at? And why would I want to be pulled away from where I'm supposed to be? Mm -hmm. So right. it's like, just like they gave me the grace to go do what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I Good extend girl. that back to Good him? Good girl. So Good can girl. I throw a different perspective yeah. in here? I, I love we're, we're all talking about, you know, the will of God and, you know, mm -hmm. and but everybody is not a Christian or not as mat mature. Um, and in some things, just it's just not that deep. You, 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 I know of a situation where the family, the, the husband and wife were uh, relocating. And of course, as mothers, we're, we want to be near our children right. normally, you know, um, <laughs> bless you a little bit like me, but that's not the subject. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> the, uh, something the husband said to me that stuck with me, he said, he said to his wife, the children have had you for 40 years. Can I please just have you to myself wow. for the next few years? So Ooh. it really made me think, you okay. know, depending on like when you got married, bye bye. you know, like maybe you dated for a year mm -hmm. and then you got married yeah, and you started having kids. children mm -hmm. and now the children are grown and up off the house. Where is our time? Mm -hmm. So when yeah, I hear I things like love. this, it sometimes yeah. makes me wonder where it, where are, where is right. the relationship yeah. You know, especially with the spouse. I mean, it's it's our time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love like my that. children and God knows I love my grandchildren, right. you know, I like but that. I I like time with me too. I like time that. by myself. Yeah. I really like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna move to this next question because mm -hmm. it's good and I'm going to Gloria. Here's why. Okay, this is really good because I'm not okay. sure if you really if this applies. Yes. Okay, so a, ra a lady writes to us, my daughter is renting an apartment with two friends that are guys. I'm not pleased. I don't think it's right. She said there's nothing wrong with it. I'm old fashioned. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. Tell us the yeah. truth. Um, well, I am somebody who has a lot of friends who, you know, just a lot of friends in general, but some are in that situation. And some of them, it's working, weirdly enough. Like, it's a very platonic, like, friendship. Mm -hmm. And honestly, not that I would, because, like, give no, no appearance of evil and, you know, just because of what I believe in that kind of stuff. But, like, my friends, I don't judge them. I don't, like, condemn them or anything like that. But I have seen the side where parents do come off really judgmental and make them, like, feel like they're just making all the wrong decisions because they're living with two guys. And I'm like, okay, well, if she's a grown adult, she's probably thought this through and has her reasons for doing this. And I think as a mom, like, the way if I decided to do this, not saying I'm not, <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. not going to do that, but... 
if I did that, I wouldn't want my mom to start some huge argument with me and just create strife in our relationship. Because I think parents tend to do that because they're like, oh, I know best and you know better than to do that. And then it just creates like this terror divide in the mother-daughter relationship. Yeah. And I think there's a way to be like, hey, this is what I believe in. These are the reasons I don't think you should do this, but you're also an adult, so make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. But I at like least you put that out and there. And I love about <laughs> coming off judgmental, too. Yeah. So, Amy, what do you think about what <laughs> oh, she said? Yeah, I'd be at the door. Yeah, yeah. you get <laughs> out now. <laughs> We're packing your stuff up now. Oh, uh, yeah, she's going to walk around in a little T-shirt and underwear headed to the bathroom. Uh, come on, with two guys are like, oh, we're just best friends. Yeah, right. Somebody's going to like somebody. You're just, you're opening a door that probably should not be opened there. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Roxy, you <laughs> have grown children. The yeah. truth of the matter is, and maybe Roxy will speak more to this, if they're grown, really, how much say do you have? And I think out of the mouth True. of babes, not yeah. referring to you as a baby, but yeah. you know. Um, there was a lot of wisdom in what she said, you know. Mm -hmm. It's our relationship. I want my daughter and I's relationship right. intact. No, I don't agree, There's, but heck, my kids are grown. I can't tell you how many things I didn't agree with, mm -hmm. you know. So, <laughs> I mean, the reality is, most, for me anyway, most of my things got resolved down on my face and on my knees, Amen. you know what I mean? Amen. And because they do, they have to process it. Yeah. And as they do, that's what helps them to grow and mature and become a mother mm -hmm. at some point in life, you know? Yeah. So I, it's obviously it's not something I don't think any of us would really want to well, see our there children There was a do. TV show called no. Three's Company when mm -hmm. we were kids. Right, but right. Roxy, what do you think? I think uh, say your piece and let them make their decision. Mm -hmm. That's what, yeah. that's what as, yeah. Flo, as Flo says often, and I say it, they're working out their testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the communication open, mm -hmm. whatever their decision finally is. Because there's so many things we're gonna disagree with. Yeah. And are you disagreeing because it doesn't look right? That's a good. And how it that's makes good. me feel. And how it makes it. you mm -hmm. feel. And you know, <clears throat> our kids have certain principles about things that are strong to them and they adhere to them. My daughters don't like me judging people, don't like me saying they should be, and, and that has made me a better person to pull back. What am I doing wrong in my life that needs corrected. Wow. Then I could take out the log in somebody else's eye. Oh, wow. And you know, we wow. also watch shows like Friends where they're all roommates. So we kind of have also seen this model of glorifying and glamifying men and women living together, but there could be some, there could be some trouble. Right, and I think it depends on how old too. Yeah. Well that also, I think if your parents are constantly interfering with every little decision you're making in life, how are you gonna grow yourself? That's, right. yeah. That's true. true. Mm -hmm. Ooh, come on. That's <laughs> called the wisdom <laughs> of Gloria. That's right. Hey, stay with us because we have lots more with the sisters and Amy's daughter oh. right after this. <laughs> Oh my gosh, welcome back. Having Gloria with us is really giving us a lot of info into what the next generation thinks. Because we're, we're, we're just enjoying this so much. So jump in to answer. But this question, you might not have an answer, I'm not sure. Roxanne, I'm gonna come to you because this takes a mature Christian to oh answer gosh. this, seriously. You're maturing is Right, so. okay, well, no, no, someone wrote to us. You write us these wild questions. Thank you, thank you for <laughs> giving hard. to us. Um, she writes, my husband had an emotional affair with a coworker and he's repented, he even moved jobs. That's good. I can't seem to get over it. Um, what do I do to let go, or maybe it's something I don't let go of? Rocks. Well, we're assuming an emotional affair is that they were intimate in their conversations and their communication. I'm guessing, yeah. And that sort of thing. That's well, that's what my assumption yeah. is on it. Yeah. You know, just because he moved doesn't mean he repented. Move jobs. Because the scripture says to produce fruits of repentance. So there's something that he's still doing that's causing her concern. Why does he need to talk to other women? Is he so full of himself? Is he really repented? If you've really repented, you're gonna be producing fruits of repentance. That's you're gonna go to your true. wife with your intimate questions. You're going to go to your wife for conversations about what you're worried about, what your needs are, what your concerns are. 
and really nobody else at an intimate level. And if he hasn't done that yet, I think that's causing her fear and concern. So he needs, in my opinion, when we actually repent, we produce those fruits, we produce those things, those actions that change our lives, that cause us to move in a different direction that others can see we have really changed inside and outside. Ooh. What do you think, Aim? I think trust is given, mistrust is earned. And so obviously mistrust has been earned. So it, it's a betrayal. I mean, what leads after a mo an emotional affair? I've, I've got you emotionally now. Next is we get together physically. I mean, that's the next step. Um, so I think that there's a lot to work through in the relationship. I've, I've seen this happen. It is absolutely heartbreaking. There is betrayal. It, it has... It, has and can lead to divorce, um, but it, the bottom line is, is is this, are you going to forgive, mm. and can you let it go, and can you move on, and can you trust again? Well, that's mm. the bottom line. See, we don't know. I mean, you're assuming mm -hmm. that he hasn't produced any fruit, and you're assuming mm -hmm. that he was close to moving on to a physical affair. We don't know that. So I say to you, forgive him. I say forgive him. If he's repented to you and to God, we don't know his heart there. I'd love you for writing this question, but I tell you, forgive him and move forward. You're never going to go forward looking in the rear view mirror at what he did. Mm -hmm. Just think of the guy, he's never going to be able to do anything good, good. ever again yeah, if you're true. always like <laughs> bringing it up. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Flo? I agree with you, actually, and, and I feel that one of the things here is she's saying, I can't seem to get over it. Right, come on. And, and I just want to just speak mm. to the fact that I can forgive Kathy, but it can be a process of me getting over it. Right. The thing about mm. an emotional affair is, even though he, and that to me is some fruits of repentance as, as right. she was sharing that he, he was willing to relocate, he did. But see, it will always be, I can't see what's in your mind. That's the, that's the hard thing about an emotional affair. Right, right. You know, even yeah. if something was physical and we relocated, well, I know you're not seeing her, you, you know, uh, maybe I, uh, I counsel couples and, and one of the things that a lot of them do, everybody has access to everything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have no reason to, I, I may check things and I don't see anything, but I'm wondering what's in your mind when you're laying with me, are you thinking about her? Are you, mm -hmm. see, I can't see what's in your mind and I think that's part of the challenge. So I would take the approach of perhaps it would be for her to go receive some counseling, you know, and not just, yes, he may have been the one to initially, um, as we would say, do the wrong, but I seem to be having problems letting go, and that's my problem, yeah, that is, not that his. That is your problem. Do you yeah. have a thought about this? I do. <laughs> okay, good. I think I fully agree with all the forgiveness, but I think you can forgive and still have a root of bitterness in you. Like You can still be really bitter towards that person, and if you continue to let yourself be bitter, it's going to ruin you. So it's going to end up like That's right. you're wanting him to be hurt or him to feel the pain, but like it's going to hurt you more than it is him if you just sit in that. That's right. And we're a Jesus show here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we talk about taking the root of bitterness out of your heart and giving it to him. So I say to you, forgive him, move forward. He has another job. Trust him again. Amy said, trust is given. Mistrust, Mistrust is earned. Is earned. Mm -hmm. Well, give him trust. That's what I say. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm going to move on. And here's this question too. Uh, another lady <laughs> writes to us. <laughs> you girls, I'm glad you're watching. My friend says I need to release my son and he's struggling in life. So we'll, we'll be praying to the Lord. Yes. She says that I step in too much to help him, but I don't know where the line is. Help, help, help. Mm. Amy, I, mean, help. I think a mother carries a part of the heart of God where we nurture things to life. And the scripture says about our father that when we make our bed in hell, he's there with us. Mm. So I'm saying if your kid mm. needs help, you should be right there when they need help. And it's, it, it's hard, it's ugly, it's painful, but I think that that represents in you the heart of God. I'm not talking about just right. dishing out money for, you know, some, but I'm talking about when they're re really struggling personally through things that we love them to life. 
who else is there for them mm -hmm. if not the mother? And I, I just wanted to say publicly, I'm so proud of you, Gloria. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been to hell and back <laughs> and we're sitting here today talking about the goodness and the faithfulness of God that I see in you and I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mom. So what about the friend? Is she, is she, is it, first of all, it's not your business friend telling the person okay <laughs> so what do you think mm. about a friend that maybe would have said to your mom you're out of you don't need yeah, to help are. her anymore I think you can only control what you can control and of course it like depends on how old the kid is and like what situation they're in but if they're a teenager and they're living in your house right, like right, right. you have a lot of control if they're 27 years old and no longer like your full responsibility like like my mom said love them back to life but you can only control what you can control and the rest you have to give to God mm -hmm. because otherwise it's just going to cause you like Drag unnecessary. You yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. What about you? I think you have to d differentiate between a helper and an enabler. That's right. That's right. So if we help our kids to grow, mm -hmm. I'm going to help pay for school. I'm going to help you look for a job. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you learn to cook, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. You can be a helper versus an enabler. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you buying the alcohol? Are you doing the things that creates them to go further and further down? Are they one step closer on the ladder of their plan, their success in the Lord? Or are they going deeper and deeper into the problem that they have? Mm -hmm. So look to see if you're a helper or an enabler. Right. And God's a rescuer. We That's have right. done wrong. Oh, you did wrong, so I'm not going to help you. No, he is the, the right. rescuer. Sometimes they need that lifeline because they've done everything wrong. And they need to know that somebody loves, loves them. them the Lord them. loves them right. through you and that you will be there to Amen. rescue. Amen. Flo, are you going to help? She said. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the, this is where I, I take a take a line here mm -hmm. the friend says Who so cares? I know that's something I, it's not the friends but I these. see I guess I take I take friendship very seriously I don't call okay. everybody my friends I have a lot of acquaintances and so mm -hmm. I a friend has permission to speak into my life that's good. and a friend mm -hmm. can have a perspective that I can't I don't necessarily see. You know, they're like your peripheral vision. And so if they're a friend of mine, they're a friend of my child. And sometimes I, she says, you know, I don't know where the line is. So the line is blurred right. for me. I don't right. know, am I enabling or am I being that nurturer? Mm -hmm. Am I doing, you know? And mm -hmm. so I've, I've gotten so engrossed in it. I'm, I'm so consumed with it that my judgment is impaired. Mm -hmm. And so that friend mm -hmm. coming to me um, with the word of counsel is something that can be very helpful. So I don't think that I'm going to hit my friend with a, you know, it's none of your business. It's not, okay. No, I'm mm -hmm. thankful that you love me enough to make it your business. And the, the balance, you guys know how I feel about yes. that, is, you know, am I enabling you? Because children, look, they know how to play. Ask Gloria. They know how to play games. Mm -hmm. They know what they can get away with and what they can't. They know, oh, if I do this, y'all, listen, I'll take an ear beat and they're going to pay the car note. I'll sit there and listen to you all right for the next yeah. three hours. You know, when I leave, I'll have money in my pocket. I'll have the car and I'll go, you know, and I'm going to go do what I want to do. So, Come on. you know, I mean, <laughs> you got to be balanced with it. Children are children. Adults are supposed to be adults. When I, as the parent, um, my judgment gets impaired because I'm so engrossed. My, my heart is tied into it. I just, you know, I can't say, sometimes the best thing that you can do is let them fall. Good. Who wants to do that? Nobody. I right. think asking mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit to, Holy Spirit, when do you want me to step in? When do you want me to back right. out? Absolutely. And ask Absolutely. for his guidance because not all of my friends knew what I was walking through. And I, I had to for her protection and our family's protection, keep things very confidential. Absolutely. And so, you know, nobody could step in for me. So I so much had to depend on the Holy Spirit. That's dangerous though, because I, I respectfully, I'm mm -hmm. saying that we, we all need and Holy Spirit, the Godhead is a friend. That's what the Holy Spirit is, right? You know, so you had God, you have his son, Jesus, and then he <laughs> leaves us with what? the Holy Spirit, who is yeah, our comforter, comforter and comforter. our friend. Comforter. You need friends. Right. Yeah. We and, just come and I'm sorry, you. friend, go ahead and help. Mm -hmm. And all of you stay right there. We're gonna wrap this up.
I hope you enjoyed that today. I'm so proud of my daughter. And you know what? I don't know what you're going through. Maybe you've been to hell and back with your kids. Just focus on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher and the developer of our faith and of our children's faith. It is so much work being a parent, and we are totally praying for you right now. We, we, let's end uh, this program with a scripture, and the scripture is in Psalm 94, 19. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, uh -oh. <laughs> your comforts delight my soul. I love what it says in the message, and this might apply to some of us today. When I was upset and beside myself, have you ever just been beside yourself and you're just so upset? This is what God does in our life. You calm me down and you cheered me up. And I just pray for you today, no matter what you're walking through, no matter maybe you've had an emotional affair, you've been through a betrayal, you're going through struggles with kids, that you just give it all to God, that you trust Him with your life, you trust Him with your family, your kids, your business, your husband, everything. God is so faithful and I promise you, He will show up again and again in your life. He is, because He loves us. That's right. And I trust your daughter to do the last scripture. You know what we say, right? Yes. As iron sharpens iron, so the countenance of another man sharpens the other. Or a woman. Ooh. Or a woman. Or a sister. <laughs> or a sister. Right. Because you see, family, these girls and these girls' daughters really do make me a much better Kathy. We'll see you next time. We're sister to sister.